<clears throat> any surgery is is uh, is not just about the skill set it is about decision making it is about uh, the timing of the surgery as well especially in cancer surgery patients present to us at several stages in the disease some might be very early stage cancers where the decision making is how to do it with the minimum morbidity do it by laparoscopy or robotic or something like that whereas for advanced malignancies whether to go off with surgery first or whether to get chemotherapy or radiation prior to surgery this whole uh, charting of the journey for the patient uh, is the very first step second comes the counseling the patient and the family needs to be prepared for what they are going to face uh this includes not just counseling about the type of surgery what results to expect what are the complications what are the finances involved and what would be the rehabilitation procedure next comes the investigations to ensure that the surgery can be done in absolute uh, safety although we cannot assure that every patient will have an uneventful outcome but we can try our level best to ensure that complications do not happen by ruling out every possible confounding factor and then finally is the surgery where the patient gets admitted and we execute the surgery what is most important in the execution or successful execution is the team it's not just the surgeon it is the assistant surgeon the anesthesia the ot staff the post operative recovery icu nurses the intensivists the physician everybody involved in the entire journey of the patient have a major and invaluable contribution towards successful outcomes so i think it's very difficult to put it in a nutshell but i guess this is as close to, uh, to it as it gets <laughs> I think uh I I I would say a, a more uh, philosophical answer for that is that you need to cherish every day uh, as a blessing. You never know when cancer will strike and it is not in your hands to ensure that you'll get cured. So whatever time you have cherish it and live it to the fullest. we can do our best through science through technology to surgery through systemic therapy to ensure that your odds are with you but nobody can be sure so whatever time you have cherish it to the maximum caregivers uh, are an integral part of the patient's uh, journey through cancer several times uh, the will of the patient to live is because of his loved ones their motivation to undergo treatment is for the loved ones the support of the loved ones is what makes the patient fight and fight hard and i think uh, while every patient is a successful survivor i mean a potential successful survivor every caregiver is an angel and a lot depends on them actually there are uh, quite a few people whom i admire i'll talk about a few of them one is of course my father uh, what he has taught me is not surgery what he has taught me is maintaining the highest level of ethical standards what he has taught me is that as a doctor 
you need to treat every patient with the same empathy that you would consider adequate for your family member and that patient outcomes comes first everything else is second while as once again i repeat it is not in our hands to ensure a successful outcome for every patient but it is definitely in our hands to try our level best that is something that my family and my father in particular has taught me as a culture and it's as deep rooted as it gets the second person whom i uh, admire the most is my professor from france françois kenny he is the person who not just taught me the science of uh, medicine or the science of surgery he taught me the art of medicine he taught me how uh, you make a difference by your mannerisms by your choice of words by how do you make accurate decision making without being biased emotionally at the same time without losing empathy for the patient he taught me how to plan surgeries he taught me the complexity of patient care not just the complexity of surgery but the complexity of patient care and how to approach it he also taught me how to whatever is possible uh, have a work life balance how to ensure how to forget work when you reach home he is like my second father and he is one person whom i admire the most the third person i admire is uh, well, i mean of course uh, i can go on i mean there are my colleagues who have had the faith uh, and the conviction in the dream that we have seen together uh they make my life exciting i look forward to going to work every day because of this whole concept that we have created and uh, i think uh, i feel blessed to have uh, these kind of uh, friends colleagues partners and uh, you know i i can't thank them enough cancer treatment is moving more and more towards uh, precision medicine i think uh, to uh, the future is going to be uh, right now we are in the era of organ specific cancer treatment but in the future we might move away from that and uh, with more and more technology detecting earlier and earlier tumors and more and more medicines uh, being uh, addressing specific genetic mutations which drive cancer genesis uh we are going to see on one hand lesser and lesser surgery for certain type of tumors and on the other hand patients which we never dreamt of operating becoming operable and going in for surgery so uh it's going to be a very intricate relationship between medical oncology and surgical oncology in purely in surgical oncology i think robotic surgery uh, is a very big thing uh, minimal invasive surgery is breaking barriers every year and uh, i think uh, with improving patient care in the post operative period even very very aggressive and complex surgeries uh, can be performed with uh, very good margin of safety and i think uh, all this is changing so dynamically that uh, we are going to have more and more sub specialties and uh, you know surgeons addressing a very specific topic uh, operating more and more and giving better and better results I think it's not one disease it's a cluster of thousands of diseases uh, and while it may we may get better and better at curing certain types of diseases and uh, it's never going to be 100% we have uh, several uh, diseases where 
you know, which were considered to be incurable, where patients are living long term, like, you know, chronic diseases, just like you have diabetes and hypertension because of very specific targeted therapies. Uh, we have, uh, you know, immunotherapy, CAR T cell therapy, which can, which has, uh, you know, converted patients which were stage four into potentially curable patients. We have surgeries like that, like I just mentioned, cytoreductive surgery. Well, uh, which was considered stage four is now potentially curable or at least have a long-term survival. So definitely we are moving in the right direction, but it's a science which is evidence-based and hence the progress is slow. Specialty surgical oncology was conceptualized as a patient-centric uh, way of uh, performing complex cancer surgeries at an affordable price with the highest level of uh, surgical and ethical standards. The reason for this was a group of surgeons coming together with one solitary grouse and that was that we could not treat all patients who came to us because they could not afford the treatment. Uh, at a quality place. We want to stick to this dogma, we want to stick to this idea that we are a patient-centric uh, organization where everything is related to the outcome of the patient. While we have various uh, additional uh, facilities like uh, automation, like, uh, you know, the entire uh, organization is uh, personalized. The patient has their own tabs where they can watch what they want, they have their own entertainment systems, they can do a nurse call, control the AC, control the mood lighting, everything through their tabs. We have uh, hospital food, which is served as a menu and it is home cooked fresh food served every time which is also a part of our social venture where we have helped uh, single mothers get livelihood by addressing the, our need for cooking. Uh, so everything has been about social impact, but all these are secondary uh, features. At the core is the value of giving the best possible care with dignity, and uh, ensuring that the patient has the best outcomes irrespective of whether they can uh, afford the facility or not. And for that, SSO is not just the hospital or the doctors. We strive to make the patient journey the best possible. Patients who can't afford, we adopt them through our uh, foundation, through our trust. We get, help them get finances from other trusts and we try our level best to ensure that no patient coming to us ever returns without getting adequate treatment, irrespective of whether they can afford it or not.